coming this weekend. Events included and just on the east side of the football stadium. Here, 37 clubs participated. The Tucson Gay Community. The, the Digital Terrain Month. Thank you for watching Wildcast. I'm Michael Hernandez. And I'm Alexis Oakley. It's official. Michael Finnegan has been elected as the U of A's new student body president. In last week's ASUA general election, Finnegan defeated opponent Hannah White, receiving nearly 2,000 votes, compared to White's 750. Tatum Hammond, who ran unopposed, will keep her seat as an administrative vice president. Now, controversy still surrounds the executive vice presidential race. Before the results were announced Wednesday night, ASUA disqualified Senator Trey Cox for five violations of the election code. The violations included campaigning in dorms and making harassing comments about his opponent, Stefano Saltalamacchia. Saltalamacchia posted a Facebook video talking about the comments. Do you claim that I am not fit for the executive vice president position? The claim that was made is that a cross-dresser should not be the next executive vice president. UATV spoke on the phone with Cox, who responded to those claims. What actually happened is the allegations he's accusing me of are just completely untrue. Com completely fabricated. A, I ended up put in a dorm. B, yes, I did go to sororities for lunch. Yes, I did ask people to vote for me, but I never once handed someone my phone to vote for me, nor did I make the, I, nor did I say, don't vote for Stefano because he's a cross-dresser. I never once said anything remotely like that, and I don't know why he is gaining so much traction with these claims, because they're just completely untrue, and it's definitely smearing my reputation beyond just ASUA. The ASUA Elections Commission has overturned Cox's disqualification, citing new rules put in place from last year's elections. Due to some events from last year, where testimony cannot be the sole basis of, an, uh, of a complaint. So I look at the evidence, I see, you know, whether or not it's enough. My decision has been made and passed through. Now it's out of my hands, and it'll go to the Elections Commission, and it'll go to the Supreme Court. Joining us now is Daily Wildcat News Director Sam Gross, who has been covering the ASUA election. Sam, thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. Well, let's, let's start off with uh, why did the ASUA Elections Commission decide to overturn the decision? So they decided to overturn the decision because, for the most part, it was hearsay. Um, there were testimonies, and that's what the five strikes were based off of, was purely testimony. They didn't have any very solid evidence as of now. Um, what do you think is next for Salta Lamakia, since he does have the chance to appeal? So he has appealed. Um, he confirmed that this morning, or I guess I think it was last Friday he confirmed it, and I spoke with Ellie Gates, the Deputy Elections Commissioner, this morning, mm -hmm. and she confirmed that it's, been, it's at the Superior Court now. Um, what comes after that is that it will go to the Superior Court, they'll review it with law students who are acting as lawyers, and it'll go from there. Do you happen to know the specific details that um, that Cox is being accused of? What exactly was he doing over at, um, or allegedly, what was he doing at the sorority houses? So allegedly he was using a cell phone with um, the ASUA elections voting site pulled up, um, and he was going around and asking girls in the Theta sorority house to vote, um, which you can't do as per the ASUA elections code. Um, was that code implemented uh, based on last year's uh, I issue between uh, Manny Felix? That part, I think, has been around for a while. Okay. Um, that part, there was uh, another strike he had um, where it's called dorm storming, where he's going into dorms using the same electronic methods to try and get people knocking on doors, trying to get people to vote. Um, and then aside from that, which the part that's maybe the more significant and people are taking more note of is... Um, that Trey's been accused of using hate speech while in the Theta House. Um, he has been accused of using um, the words cross-dresser to describe Sultan Right. Sultan. Um, and what do you what do you expect uh, for the Supreme Court uh, to, to make their decision? Um, that's a hard question to answer. I spoke with Allie Gates again this morning, um, and they um, they don't know yet. Um, it's sometime in the next week. All right. Well, keep us tuned. Tuned Thank in. Thank you very much. Thank you. We really appreciate it. All right. We'll be right back.
doing? Working. Continue. Hi, it's David Hasselhoff, The Hoff. Get Hoff with UATV. Stay tuned, don't change the dial. May graduates, if you're still looking for a job after college, UA Spring Career Day is giving you the chance to apply. More than 200 com companies, including Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, are all looking to fill more than 3,300 full-time positions. There's also 1,200 internships up for grabs grabs for those who are not graduating. The job fair will be Tuesday and Wednesday from 11 to 4 in the Student Union's Grand Ballroom. A full list of companies coming is on the Career Services website. Now let's jazz things up a bit. The Fred Fox School of Music is putting on its 38th annual AZ Jazz Week. Audiences can enjoy a jazz performance every night through Friday in Crowder Hall. Tickets start at $5 and can be bought from the Fine Arts box office. A full list of this week's shows are on music.arizona.edu. Well, spring break can't get here soon enough. Now, if you're heading to the beach to relax with a good book, the Tucson Festival of Books will have plenty this weekend. The two-day celebration features around 350 authors and attracts more than 130,000 of you bookworms. A full schedule of when you can see your favorite author is on TucsonFestivalOfBooks.org. And I'm looking, really looking forward to the Festival of Books. I, I'm so excited. I'm, I'm the biggest bookworm you'll probably ever meet. So. What's your favorite? Do you, um, do you I started with book? Harry Potter, actually. I know that's a big cliche, but I started with Harry Potter. I read the entire book, uh, the entire series in two weeks. The Boy Wizard? The what? I'm, you're a wizard. Oh, Harry. so you didn't you didn't grow up with it like as no. It I started came out. with the last book, and then I was like, "This is great," because I didn't know the last book was a part of a series. It was great. Well, looking forward to it. Uh, Arizona go basketball got their home season started with an opening day at High Corbett Field, while men's basketball ended their season with an exciting win on a senior day. All the highlights are coming up next, so don't go away. We'll be right back. I'm Derek Williams. The former U of A Wildcat, you're watching UA TV. Don't change the channel. Hi, it's David Hasselhoff, The Hawk. Get Hawk with UATV. Stay tuned, don't change the dial. The former U of A Wildcat, you're watching UATV. Don't change the channel.
What are you guys doing? Working. Continue. Hello Wildcats and welcome to Wildcats Sports. I'm your anchor, Danielle Fork. Let's take a look at the highlights from this past weekend in Arizona athletics. Men's basketball had all of McHale on their feet as they brought down Stanford 94-62 in the final home game of the season. It was senior day and Gabe York put on a show, scoring nine three-pointers and earning a career-high 32 points. Seniors Ryan Anderson and Caleb Tarzuski added 14 points and 13 points for Arizona as well. And even walk-on Jacob Hazard scored three threes in his final moments. This win earned a number four seed in the Pac-12 tournament, giving the Wildcats a first round bye. Arizona men's swimming competed in the Pac-12 championships over the weekend and finished, third in and finished day three in fourth place. The Wildcats have a total of 17 swimmers in the finals. Cat Softball hosted the Wildcat Invitational this weekend. They fell 4-2 in the opening game against BYU on Thursday night, but then came back and earned a win against Mount St. Mary's and a win in a rematch with BYU on Friday. Katiana Malga helped the Wildcats win the rematch against BYU with two home runs. Sand Volleyball went undefeated this weekend in the Arizona Invitational with victories over LMU, TCU, and Cal. come out and get some sun, listen to some music, and just hang out. It's awesome. I think the team is definitely a young team, so it's a team that everyone um, at the school should come and support. You can see new talent and new girls coming out here and just competing. This year you can look for a more physical team, a lot younger team, but the skills are there and the talent is there for us to go really far this year. They can look for some wins. That's right. <laughs> All right, thank you. Volleyball's coming in hot this year. Wildcat Sand Volleyball is now 4 and 0 to start the season. Their next match is at Concordia University in California on Friday. It was a beautiful weekend here in Tucson for opening day at High Corbett Field. Wildcat sports recorder, reporter Chris Delgado has the baseball highlights. Take me out to the ball game, which is High Corbett Field, where the Arizona Wildcats would take on number 16 Cal State Fullerton. And in the second inning, J.J. Matajevic drives one deep to left center. Off the wall, he would round second, come into third, making it a triple for the sophomore infielder. Matajevic would then score from a single from Bobby Dahlbeck, making it 1-0 Arizona. Now you stay in the second inning, and Cesar Salazar, the freshman, is at the plate, hits a sacrifice fly to left. Bobby Dahlbeck on third would take off, sliding into home 2-0 Arizona, and it would stay that way throughout the game due to some amazing pitching. It was a beautiful afternoon for some Arizona baseball in their season opener here at home at High Corbett, especially for senior pitcher Nathan Bannister. He would pitch six and two thirds, giving up two hits and no runs, while Bobby Dahlback would come in and help close to get the victory. You know, I, I think first off, his experience was very valuable. And, you know, this is our first time playing in, in front of this crowd here. And I felt like he would handle the moment, the, the nerves, all of those things well. And uh, he used his experience, uh, which was very valuable. And he pitched down in the zone. I mean, they did not get very many pitches to hit. And, you know, tonight, with the ballpark playing the way that it did and, and the ball going nowhere, uh, that benefited us. And uh, he was spectacular. This uh, park, I mean, you get rewarded if you hit ground balls on the ground, hard ground balls. Um, the ball travels here, but anything in the air, it's usually an out. And uh, I think we did a pretty good job of competing tonight. So this is a huge win for us. In a pitcher's duel, the final score, 2-0, to zero, the Arizona Wildcats taking home the victory in their season home opener. Reporting at High Corbett Field for Wildcast Sports, I'm Chris Delgado.
Finally, after his outstanding performance on Senior Day, senior Gabe York earned Pac-12 Player of the Week. He is currently averaging 25.5 points per game and ranks fourth in U of A history with 219 made three-point field goals in a career. This is the first time York has received this award. That's all we have for sports highlights today. As always, thanks for tuning in to Wildcast Sports, but don't go away. We'll be right back. Hi, David Hassel off the hop. Get hop with UATV. Stay tuned. Don't change the dial. The former U of A Wildcat, you're watching UATV. Don't change the channel. Thank you very much for tuning into Wildcast. As always, you can check us out on our YouTube page at youtube.com UATVCH3. We had a great time tonight, and we hope you had a great time watching us. So, good night. Good night. <laughs>